اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد نواية الأربعين أعوذ بالله شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نواية الأربعين نواية العتكاف نواية الخلوة نواية العزة نواية الرياض نواية السلوك لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المجد We are taking some some hadith or things that has been mentioned in many different sources and we are taking from Al-Jawab Al-Kafi Liman Sala An Al-Dawa Al-Shafi Al-Dawa Al-Shafi from Ibn Qayyim Al-Jawziya is a student of Ibn Taymiyyah I'm taking from there because it's from their own sources from their own things that they accept in order that we can build on it as Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah drivers of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam We are mentioning about Dua and We are mentioning about We are mentioning about Du'as like now we have like 10 chapters or 10 lectures on that or 12 lectures and the importance of du'a for curing and also in the same time what we have to, to not to do in order that we will be saved in dunya and akhira uh, and uh, how sahaba used to look at what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying to them and building on that their own sayings and their own statements. In the last lecture we mentioned about Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Siddiq, Sayyidina Umar ibn Af Sayyidina Umar ibn al Farooq and Sayyidina Usman ibn Affan. What they have said uh, because dua save you from the poison of akhira and poison of dunya and from poison of dunya through this all kind of different negative energy if we can call it poison that affect your body your system and also the the poison of Akhira, uh, the things that affect your Akhira is that poison that you build up in your soul, on your soul, from sins. So the sins that you do in dunya, it will affect your body, dunya and Akhira. And Sahaba tried to be careful, to run away from it. And they wished many things in order not to see that kind of poison in, that we will be dressed in Akhirah. We mentioned about Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Siddiq, I'm not going to repeat it. But he used to say that he used to cry a lot and he used to say, Oh Allah, I wished you have made me a hair in the body of a mu'min. Means a hair for me is enough because in a body of a mu'min because that hair will not be judged in the day of judgment because already it is in a body of a mu'min. Means I wish that I will not be left to my ego. As Prophet Sallallahu said, Oh Allah, don't leave me to my ego for a blink of an eye. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr used to say the same what he heard from Prophet and used to say, Upku, cry. 
if you were not able to cry tabaku try to push yourself to show that you are crying to yourself because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishment is not easy and he said Abu Qutada said that our Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was saying I wish to be vegetation that animals will eat me means I don't not to be existing Sayyidina Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda he said to his son when I die put my body my face directly on the soil because today they don't put it on the soil directly they put it they open the coffin on the face and the coffin is first on the soil then the head he said put my face directly on the floor on the ground perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this humility that I am doing to myself Allah will forgive me sometime when he is reading Quran at night and passes by verse by a verse that make him to cry he cries for several several days and gets sick and never comes from uh, from his house until he feels better so the verses of Holy Quran as he is passing through it it was pure uh, uh, terrifying him from Allah's azab punishment and we explained that and Sayyidina Osman we explained that he said if I was between Jannah and between Nar waiting for Allah judgment on me I that moment I wish to be ashes not to exist anywhere because I don't know what Allah judgment will be so I wish I am not existing it means I am I'm like ashes وهذا علي بن أبي طالب سيدنا علي it is said that he used to fear so much when he reads Quran and in his life all his life he was afraid worried that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not happy with him so he's worried of two issues that we have to put them in our eyes and to today people are not living for their they could say for their day but they live uh, some people they say I'm living for my day I don't have something for tomorrow what you say in Tahir living for today they didn't they don't have any any idea any thinking about tomorrow so Sayyidina Ali used to say I am afraid of two Tulul Amal looking too much far in the future that I wish to live so f much that I want to have all this in my future life and today everyone say to you feels that he has to do plans for 10 years ahead or 20 years ahead it's not companies today they say 20 years ahead what they have to make plan or countries they look 20 perhaps you die perhaps a tsunami come and takes you all so how you are planning and Allah might call you at any moment what you really you, you need to plan is for your akhirah not for your dunya that's why sahaba used to live for the day he said turul amal makes me to turul amal to think so much in future that is a danger on me i always try to be afraid from thinking like that there was one of awliyaullah 
in Damascus, Sham, used to, I mentioned that before, used to live his own day. Any gifts come to him during the day, he cannot sleep without giving it out. Many people, they might give him something as a gift or sadaqah to distribute, but we're speaking about what he owns, gift. He has to make sure that it's being given out. One day he came to his house. He, he already advised his daughter every day that distribute. If I am late, make sure you give everything out. One day came to his house and make what pray to rakats, going to his bed, and he was not able to sleep. And he knows when he is not able to sleep, means there is something from dunya in the house, above their needs. Today, what you need for, for life, to live? A mattress, if you want a mattress. Prophet and Sahaba used to, f to sleep on a mattress of st from straw. Now they tell you mattress from foam and from springs and a mattress that you can buy for five dollars, now you have to buy for three thousand dollars. And now not, more, not only that, they have mattress for, uh, through electricity. It heat up, it goes up, it goes down, the way you like. And they say it takes your, your uh, similar, the body how it is, and it functions accordingly. They used to sleep on a straw mattress. Bre Prophet wasallam, what was his food? Bread, in the morning, a hot cup of water with one spoon of honey. Do we do that? We need coffee, we need tea, we need breakfast. He takes one cup of water, hot water, with honey. Noon time, before noon, like brunch, he takes one cup of milk and seven dates. Before Maghrib, he takes one bread, broken bread, and it is very, very uh, hard, with olive oil and vinegar. Dump it, dip it, and eat. This is mainly, some days dates only, and three dates. This is doing for Akhirah. For dunya you need what we are today, every, every one of us is falling into the trap of shaitan. They have everything. And planning also what you have to save in your freezers and fridges and everything in order that when, if something happen, what to do. To. So Sayyidina Ali used to be afraid from that. So that's when he was checking. He was not able to sleep. There is something from dunya in the house that's not being given out. So he wake his daughter, wake her up, said, what, what you have that you did not distribute today? Should I, oh my father, we don't have anything. I, every food I distributed, everything came as gift, clothes or anything I distributed. Everything came like 
like wheat, like uh, chickpeas, like whatever, lentils, I gave it. There is nothing. So they live their day f for, the, for their day, day by day. Next day, Allah Kareem. They don't think about next day. Do we think about next day? Huh? Yes. Too much. We're thinking about next day. We don't think about today because today we know that already we have prepared for it like one month ago. We, we think about tomorrow. Don't do to something that I'm going to do this tomorrow. Say, but if Allah wishes. Don't say I'm going to do this tomorrow. Leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Might be if you leave it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah give you millions more than what you are thinking or what you have planned. So that man, he said, no, no, it must be something in the house. She remembered that someone brought for them a lamb, uh, leg of lamb. She put it over the cupboard and she forget about it. So he took it down, cut it into pieces and went out. Who is on the streets? Cats and dogs to give. After midnight, where he's going to knock at the door of people? So he gave to them. I went and he slept. He was able to sleep. Before Fajr, wake up, make wudu, pray Qiyam al going to the masjid, and all these dogs and cats following him to the masjid. Because they were happy with him. They were happy, they are loyal, they were loyal to, because he gave to them. A dog will be loyal when you give him something, is not? Allah is giving us everything. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَنَّاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ We carried them on earth and on water and we provided them from everything طَيِّب طَيِّب طَاهِر Something we good, clean, we provided them from the most delicious that they want to, to eat. We provided. Minat Tayyibat. So we must be loyal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying Him. That's why Sayyidina Ali said, I am worried. If I am not loyal, to obey Allah and obey His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and tool al amal the looking for what you need to, to do in order to for future will take you away from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loyalty and Prophet loyalty. Because you're lo you are going to be loyal to yourself first when you are looking for what you are going to do in the future. Not loyal to what Allah has given to you and uh, depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not depending on your ego, on yourself. So he was worried that this might, might happen and he cannot deal with it because the ego always asks you, oh, what tomorrow we want to do? How you are going, what kind of work you want to do. Today they do 2020 plans, 2030 plans, these, these big companies. Everything today is built on contrary of what Allah likes.
ما أريد منهم من رزق إن الله هو الرزاق ذو القوة المتين I don't want from them provisions they, Allah is the one who provides Allah will provide them whatever they want Allah bought from you in Allah ashtara min al-mu'minin anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah Allah bought from those believers everything he took from them their lives ashtara min al-mu'minin ashtara he bought he bought give me this I give you paradise Give me struggle in dunya in my way, I give you paradise. Anfusahum wa amwalahum. Allah bought from the mu'nins, from believers, their, themselves and their money, their wealth. In order that I give them paradise. Hey, today what we are doing, we are not selling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are selling to, huh? to who? To shaitan. We are selling him ourselves. Take it. Yeah, I want you to take it. How I can tell you? You have to think about what's going to happen to you after a hundred years. A hundred years, Allah Kareem. No, 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 no. You have to think, keep thinking. So you begin to fight. Because when you think you need something, you fight for it. And this, that's why countries are fighting with each other. Because everyone wants the chair. These politics, parties, Allah destroyed the parties by Himself. Every party is happy with what they have. They are not happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are happy with their shaitan. So Sayyidina Ali is worried. He said, I'm worried from thinking for the future. I am today. After one minute, I might be existing. Might be I die. Today they, they give you a house, they take 30 years loan. They know you might not live for 30 years. You might die five years, they take the house. Because the wife cannot continue. Yeah. They take everything from you. And they made it 30 years because in order to get three times more the value of the house. If you buy the house for 300, you pay 1 million in 30 years. So everything built on wealth, on money, and anything built on money has to be built on shaitan. Anything built on iman, on faith, that's what will, can take you to akhirah and save you there. Anything on money, can you buy hasanat on money, with money? Can you come to him and say, can you send me some of your hasanat? I give you that money. Huh? How? He doesn't guarantee himself that he has hasanat. Everyone, all of us, we cannot guarantee that we have something good, that we are doing something good. How I am going to give him what I don't own? So how I am going to go to him and say, can I sell 10 hasanat from you? What is the value? A 10 hasanat, if you put the value of this whole dunya in one side of the balance and you put uh, all your uh, dunya on the other side, 10 hasanat is heavier. So how much you want to sell it? You cannot, you cannot know what you sell. 
And today, they don't sell except they don't sell us anything except para, uh, 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 plans in the, in air. There is no benefit. What is benefit, Zaim? Is to obey Allah and obey Prophet. Sahaba, they knew that. Sayyidina Ali said, Tulul Amal means to feel that you want to do for future makes you to forget about Akhirah. Because you are not. Tulul Amal is to live long and to have a lot of things that you look forward in future to get. So you are building yourself on a future of, for example, average life is 75 years today. You are, and you are 30 years of age. You are building your, your uh, hope for 50, 40, days ahead, 40 years ahead or 50 years ahead. You might die tomorrow. You lose everything, and you lose Akhirah. But if you build your hope, looking into building your Akhirah, that is acceptable. You can do that. Because it comes under the chapter of obey Allah and obey Prophet He said, I am worried because Turul Amal to look forward, Fayunsil Akhira makes you to forget about your Akhira. Wa'amma tiba'ul hawa fayasuddu an al haq. The second thing is to follow your desires. To follow desires, it takes you away from truth. Because desires never on truth. Desire is always is what shaitan is pushing into your mind to do. Bad desires. Good desires are very rare to come to your mind. Good desire, for example, not you prayed Zuhur, now just we prayed Zuhur. Good desire is to pray, to come to your mind, pray 100 rakats. Do you do that? Or come to your mind, pray 50 rakats. Do you do that? That's good desire. Read Quran. You open the Quran to read, hundreds of phones comes. People calling. So what you need to do? Unplug the telephone. Good desire. Do you unplug the telephone? I am seeing them, I am giving the khutbah on Jum'ah and people are uh, as I'm asking each other on telephone. The telephone on vibration, as soon as it vibrates, you see him took telephone from his pocket and checking. If you carry a stone or, or a masbaha, or masbaha when the imam was in the member, your, your prayer is false. Today, too many people, they speak with each other even. Because it's part of the Jum'ah, of the prayer. Two rak'ats equal to the khutbah. You cannot move even in, 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 in Jum'ah. Focus. Your focus is at the speaker, at the one who is the Imam, the Khatib. So, he is worried, Sayyidina, Ali Karramallahu Wajha, he is worried he is worried about to follow bad desires. Tiba'al Hawa. And take him away from Haq. Oh human being, he said, in the dunya kadwallat mudbira. This dunya is moving, leaving, finishing its days. Wal-akhira mukbila. And this other life, heavenly life, is coming. So then 
which one you have to work for? Huh? Akhirah. I'm not saying to these people here, or people that they go to uh, masajid or uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah's uh, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful names and attributes on all of you. It's not easy to come from far distances to spend some time and then go. It's not that is against the desire of the self. That's against Ittiba' al-Hawa, what Sayyidina Ali is saying. And he said, for everyone there is a child. Dunya has its children, Akhirah has its children. Has its children. Be from the children of Akhirah, he's saying, Sayyidina Ali. Be from the children of Akhirah, don't be from the children of Dunya. And people who go to, to massage it for a good cause to learn are people for the children of Akhirah. Don't have, don't fall into the desire of your self. Tiba al Hawa. Too many today. Too many today. May Allah keep us, keep us safe. All of us, here and there, wherever they are. But too many today, they have programs they call leadership programs. Is that? They want to teach them how to be, how to be what? Leader. Uh, injecting them with, uh, uh, with a full injection of arrogance and pride. That's it. I'm not saying not to, to, to teach them leadership, but teach them leadership with humbleness. A good leadership is a humble leadership. Like Sayyidina Amr carrying on his shoulder sacks of food and going around sea checking all the houses that they have no food, poor people giving them food until one lady said, I wish that Sayyidina Amr learned from you. So, speaking to leadership, there are also leadership using any, pos any possible way to do in order to put themselves on top of everyone. From people of dunya, from people of akhirah. They don't care if they divide the community, but if they, if they find a chance to sit on a chair. And this is what they are trying to do in every tariqah, and especially in this tariqah, Naqshbandi Hakani order. They are trying to divide the Baal Hawa, they are following their, their desires, bad desires. If I will say what I have heard from many, many, many people, what this, what they are trying to divide, some people in different countries trying to divide the community to become more and more branches. What's the benefit? Then I tell you what will happen at the end. If you continue to do that, everyone will take his own branch and move with it. No one is going to accept what you are trying to uh, portray that this is the one that is responsible and the other one is not responsible and you follow this one, the leadership will be this one or that one. They are not going to, it's not going to happen. Everyone will divide, and it will be a big division into hundreds of branches in the Nakshman, the Hakkani order. May Allah, may Allah guide them all, guide us all, to not to reach that, uh, 
that way. To check people asking them with whom you are, which division you are in different countries and you promote one against one and trying to make a huge sharkh, sharkh fracture from into the coin like fracturing a bone need need one month and six weeks to heal this will never heal that fr fracture fracture in the in the muslim community today there is a fracture in in the salafi community there is a fracture they are fighting with each other in the ahl sunnah wal jamaa there are fractures different groups in in the shia uh, no, uh, 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 shia uh, mazhab there is a fracture in every in the in the sufis there are fractures in the naqshbandis there are fractures and who is going to take that responsibility in front of allah and his prophet you are trying only to promote fitna you are not trying to, to, to keep fitna dormant or to eliminate fitna. When you ask people as they're coming at the door of awliyaullah, they're asking them which group you are or you promote one group against one group, then you know that you are doing something against Allah and his prophet and against the sheikh that you are following. We have to tell you that in dunya there is 124,000 sheikhs. There is a sultan, everyone thinks his, his sheikh is his sultan. So we, think, we believe that Mawlana Sheikh Nazim is our sultan. So don't destroy the, that way of, of belief on, in people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to our akhirah as Sayyidina Ali said. And he said for everyone, for dunya there are children, for akhirah there are children. Don't be the children of dunya that we are running after dunya only for collecting uh, from here and there things that uh, awliya Allah, they never touch it. You are touching it for a fame or for a, share, for a share or for anything. And Allah knows the heart. Who is, who is doing what? May Allah forgive us and forgive you. وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا Don't be from dunya people. Be from akhira. فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْآخِرَ فَإِنَّ الْيَوْمَ عَمَلٌ وَلَا حِسَابٌ Today is amal to do good. But there is no judgment today. Whatever you do today, you don't feel any punishment or any reward. You do not get any answer. But tomorrow, there is no amal. But there is hisab. Tomorrow no amal. But there is hisab. There is judgment. Today there is amal. No judgment. Tomorrow. In akhirah. There is judgment. But no amal. So you choose. We have to choose. And I will read that hadith. I will not explain it today. I will explain it one day, inshallah. Allah is great. Qala al-Imam Ahmad. Imam Ahmad said in his Musnad, Haddathana al-Walid ibn Muslim. And those, in this book, majority of the hadith, if not, if not all of the hadith, they have strong sanad. حدثنا الوليد بن مسلم حدثنا صفوان بن عمر حدثنا عبد الرحمن بن جبير بن نفير عن أبيه قال لما فتحت قبرص فرق بين أهلها 
he said from his father he said لما فتحت قبرص فرق بين أهلها فبكى بعضهم إلى بعض فرأيت أبا الدرداء جالسا وحده يبكي فقلت يا أبا الدرداء ما يبكيك في يوم أعز الله فيه الإسلام وأهله فقال ويحك يا جبير ما أهون الخلق على الله عز وجل إذا أضاع أمره بينما هي أمة قاهرة ظاهرة لهم الملك تركوا أمر الله فصاروا إلى ما ترى I will keep it in Arabic and I will, uh, will translate it in English inshallah to be for correct in every word we are saying and I will leave it to another time to explain it you got it Tahir page 66 in, Al in Ibn Qayyim al Jawziya book in Jawab al Kafi liman sa'ala an al Dawa al Shafi This is from Imam Ahmad in his Musnad. لما فتحت قبرص فرق بين أهلها فبكى بعضهم إلى بعض فرأيت أبا الدرداء جالسا وحده يبكي فقلت يا أبا الدرداء ما يبكيك في يوم أعز الله فيه الإسلام وأهله فقال ويحك يا جبير ما أهون الخلق على الله عز وجل إذا أضاع أمره بينما هي أمة قاهرة ظاهرة لهم الملك تركوا أمر الله فصاروا إلى ما ترى السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We'll translate that later إن شاء الله حرمة الفاتحة This is about what sins can affect the people How it affect them Sins How it affect uh, the people in their lives and especially when Cyprus was being opened to Muslim how their sins have uh, affected the people there and we'll mention it inshallah Fatiha What children? I am younger than you. Sahib is cutting the trees. Go and help him. He's on this side now, driveway. So anyone who can help, go help.